Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro video editing tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to create this kind of cool sliding effect. Whoa! Yeah, something kind of like that. And we can also do it from the other side of the screen right there. See how that works? And everything slides right back into place beautifully when it's all said and done. Now this is great for introducing a new clip, maybe temporarily showing something on the screen. Uh, maybe you want to have a graphic overlay to explain something about the scene that somebody is watching in kind of a cool and modern way. Or maybe you want it to be a full-fledged image transition where it moves over, displays half the video to begin with, and then finishes sliding across. You can really do all sorts of different things. We're going to talk about it all here in this video tutorial, and it all starts right now. Here we are in Premiere Pro, and we can see we have the first effect where the train slides over and then slides back. Over here, this is just kind of a faster version of it. Uh, and then last but not least, we have a graphic that slides on screen and then slides back off screen. We're going to cover how to create those two effects. It's really two effects. There's just two kind of versions of the same effect that I was playing around with. Uh, I want to select my high-speed train clip. I've got a high-speed train and an old, older freight train. I'm going to select the high-speed train clip, right-click on it, and choose New Sequence from Clip. And then I'm going to rename this clip uh, slider, I don't know, two or something because I already have a, sli a slide effect one up there and this is slider two. I know what I'm working on. That's the most important thing here. We know what we're working on. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we're going we're gonna to click here on this tab to select our timeline. I'm going to hit the plus button a few times just to zoom in a little bit, uh, see what I'm working on. And I'm going to drag a copy of the freight train out here onto this clip here. So I want the clip to play for a little bit. Uh, maybe yeah, a second or two, something like that. And the freight train will begin like right there. Now with the freight train, I'm just going to right click on it and choose to unlink. And I'm going to get rid of the audio. We really don't need the audio. I don't have the speakers on, so we're not going to hear it anyway. But we're just going to work with this purely as a visual effect. So I'm going to drag sound stuff down low. And I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm hovering over like V1, 2, or 3. And I'm just going to use my mouse wheel and scroll up a little bit. And it's just going to expand these tracks a little so I can see a little bit more of what we're working on. So the idea here is going to be... We're we're watching this original train take off and then the freight train is going to make an appearance and scroll in from the right hand side of our of our window. We're going to do this by first working with the freight train clip. So uh, we need the freight train clip to begin off stage, if you will. It needs to be hiding out over here and then be pushed onto the stage. And as as, as it's pushed into the window, our uh, modern train will be slid off to the left to kind of accommodate and recenter it in the remaining bit of the window. We're going to do this using an effect and the effect is called linear wipe. So we're going to go with a linear, we're going to type in linear and there it is, video effects transition linear wipe. If I have the freight train video track selected, I can simply double click on the linear wipe and it's going to add it to my freight train. Cool. Now, right now, the transition completion, as you can see, is 0%, which is actually 100%. Uh, it's, it's all showing, if you think of it in terms of how much of the video is showing. If I scroll this over, you can see that the closer I get to 100, the less of the train I see. And at 100, I see none of the train. So I actually want to begin this effect at 100%. So I'm going to just select, I'm going to drop a keyframe, let's say right here. So I'm going to drop a keyframe by clicking on the little stopwatch, turn on animating, and drop a keyframe. Now what I'm going to do is determine how long I want the slide to take place. Uh, so I can hold down my shift key and tap the right arrow key once to move five frames down the video and shift in the right arrow key maybe, maybe like two or three more times, something like that. So I did shift in the right arrow key a total of four times. Now I want to animate this from 100% down to 50%. So 50% will take me to halfway across my window. So I'm going to set that to 50%. And there we go. We see half of the train and that's going to animate from there to there. So if I just play this, we can see, voila, we're seeing half the train. So we have the first part of our overlay, but a couple things. It's not really, like, it's it's very just static. We can make this a little bit more dynamic by hovering over or selecting both of those keyframes, right click, and choose ease, uh, let's ease them out. And if I play this now, it kind of like, boom, it just drops into place. It feels a little bit more natural as that happens. I can drag these keyframes all the way to the beginning of the video clip as well, if I want them to be closer to the beginning of the freight train video clip. And there we go, we see the freight train come right, come right through. I actually think maybe I'll move it back out a little bit because it's almost like the train lines up well, right, with the old train. It's almost like the new train is coming out of the old train. That's kind of cool. So that kind of lines up nicely. And now as this happens, we need our modern train, this track down here, we need it to slide to the left. So we need, or ideally we want our modern electric train to still be centered in sort of the half of a window it has. 
So we need to slide it over. How do we position and start and end the slide perfectly? Well, first of all, select the freight train uh, video track and use this next keyframe button. So that's going to take and place the playhead exactly where our animation is going to begin. With the playhead in that position, go ahead and select the high speed train video track. And we're going to drop a keyframe there for just the position of this video track. So go position, drop that keyframe. Great. Now we can just use our arrow keys and we can nudge our way through this or even shift and nudge our way through it all the way until we get to the very end of the animation. So right there is the last frame where we have any animation. And what we can do is hover over the 960 here, the, the X positioning of this clip, and we can just pull it to the left to just slide that train over just like that. And then I can, I'm just going to select both these keyframes as we did before. Right click. We're going to go temporal interpolation and go ease out. And now when we play through this, we have the base of our first effect. A new train slides in, the other train slides over. Well, now we need the old train to slide off and the new train to slide back into place. How do we do that? Well, let's begin like right here. We're again going to begin with the freight train. Let's say we want the animation to slide off the screen to begin here. We place a new keyframe right there and we just nudge it over. Let's go shift and the right arrow key four times so it's the same exact speed as before. Shift one, two, three, four with the right arrow key and I'm going to set transition completion to 100%. There we go, and now it's gone. We can hover over these, and it looks like they're still ease, uh, ease out. So voila, and it's gone. The problem is we now have this big gaping hole where the modern train should be filling in. So once more, we're going to use our, now we're going to go go to previous keyframe button, and I'm going to go all the way to right where the animation is going to begin. The animation to get the freight train off screen is going to begin. I'm going to select my high speed train track, and I'm going to add a keyframe. We're holding this at that 631 on the X and I can go back up to the freight train. I can use my next keyframe button just to get me to exactly where the animation is going to be completed. Go back to the high speed train track and now just hit this reset parameter button right there. And voila, it's going to reset the parameter. We might want to select that keyframe, right click and make sure this is just set to ease out as well. And now as we play through this, the older train comes on, the newer train adjusts. And now as the older train slides off, the newer train adjusts to refill the entirety of the screen. So it's really that simple. And in order to get, let's say you want the, the older train to come in from the left side of the screen instead of the right, all you would have to do is change the wipe angle from 90 to something else. I mean, in fact, you could go with like zero and the wipe angle will be bringing it down from the top, right? Which that could be its own kind of effect. That's kind of cool. But you want a wipe angle of, I believe it would be 270. Yeah, so 270 will bring it right in from the left side of the screen. But of course, you would need to change the way the position animates here with your modern train to get it to slide the right direction and all of that. I'm going to undo that a few times. In fact, I am going to get rid of my freight train layer altogether. I'm going to select the high speed train layer. I'm going to get rid of all these keyframes in here. And we're going to talk about animating the little info card on and off using kind of a, a simpler effect. It's, it's in fact a, an actual video transition built into Premiere Pro under here or instead of under here, I should say under the video transitions and under slide. Let's drag that graphic on. So if I go back to test projects, I have this graphic here. It's just a PNG. So I created it in Photoshop. I exported it. It's a PNG with full transparency and it is kind of what it is. So I could have this, let's say we want the graphic to appear right there. The image was created in 1080p, so 1920 by 1080, and just made the graphic all transparent, like I said, exported the PNG. So it all is going to line up just perfectly when I first and initially drag it into my Premiere Pro uh, document here. Now, I want this obviously to slide on and then slide off in a somewhat more graceful manner than just blinking and appearing. I'm going to drag this graphic out so it appears for a longer period of time, explains, you know, kind of about this Ice 3 train, which we see here on, on screen, and, uh, you know, it is what it's just some info from Wikipedia or whatever. So... With this, I'm going to go back to my effects panel and I'm going to go with the push effect here. I'm going to drag it and drop it on the front of my info card. So when I do this here, you can see the card is pushed right across the screen, but it's really not at all the effect I'm looking for. I want the card to come in from the right. So what I want to do is select my push transition. I'm actually clicking on that push transition right there on that video clip and I'm going to tick on reverse. See there's reverse. I'm going to tick it on. Boom. Now what's going to happen is it's going to push, voila, right from the right. And oh, by the way, if reverse doesn't work for you, you can use these arrows up here and say have it push down from the top. So we go north to south, and you can see it's going to push just like that. Uh, or we could go south to north. Oops, let me select that pushing south to north and have it just drop right in from the top. So you got all kinds of options with the push. Uh, it's really pretty cool. I'm going to push it in from the side again and we can see, oh, wrong side. I always get this mixed up. What am I doing here? 
Uh, let's push it in from the other side. Ah, actually, I was getting it mixed up because we still have reverse checked on. So, of course, a top to bottom would start at the bottom and go to the top because reverse is ticked on. Uh, I'm actually going to make sure we do this the right way. Let's shut reverse off and let's just go east to west like that, right? Keep it nice and simple. Boom, pops right in. The reason I want to do it like that is because we're going to apply the same, the same push transition on the way out and I don't want to have things confusing. In fact, I think the default is going to work perfectly for us. Whoop, just slides it right off screen. So we slide on. And then back here at the end, we slide right off. Cool. Now, obviously, as this slides on, we would like our train to slide over to the left a little just to kind of recenter the video clip. So what we'll do is we'll kind of do this manually. We'll use the arrow keys and wait until the animation begins right there. And you can see it's a very short animation, in fact. We can zoom in on it, right? And we select the high-speed train, and we'll do exactly what we did before. We still have the animation uh, keyframe stopwatch activated, so animation is still kind of turned on, if you will. I'm going to choose to add a keyframe right here, and I'm going to use my arrow keys, one, two, really over the course of two frames, it's going to bump right over, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is just use my, uh, hover over that number, and I'm just going to slide it over until it looks about the way I want it, and Premiere Pro is going to auto keyframe and place that second keyframe. In fact, if I just use my plus button and zoom in, I can see there are two keyframes. I'm going to hover over or select both keyframes, right click, and I'm just going to choose to ease, let's try easing these in. Let's see what that looks like. Um, and now let's just play through this. Voop, just slides right over, all right? And we do the same thing on the way out, right? So we just zoom in on this. The animation is gonna begin right there. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I add a keyframe. I'm gonna zoom out here in my animation timeline. Added a keyframe there, one, two, three keyframes over, and we're just gonna hit that reset parameter button as we did before, select that keyframe, right click, temporal interpolation, we're gonna ease this in as well. And let's just watch the whole thing start to finish. So we begin, the info card slides on, the video recenters itself, and the opposite happens when the info card slides off. So it's really pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward, and uh, you can use it for so many different things. And obviously, you saw we could make info drop down from the top or pop up from the bottom and you know, left or right, and the video will readjust itself, and it looks just really, really cool. So I hope you really enjoyed it and liked that little tutorial on how to create that kind of pushing and pulling effect a little bit. I kind of dig it. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's useful. I use it a bit in my tutorials as well when I just need to display a little bit of information on one of the sides or you know any of the sides, really. In fact, we used it in the intro to this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you follow me over there on Instagram at Tutvid. That's T-U-T-V-I-D. We're moving into a new studio space, so lots of cool behind-the-scenes stuff coming soon. Live stuff, all kinds of cool stuff that I really think you're going to dig. We're creating this sliding, pushing, pulling, animated effect in Premiere Pro with built-in actual real deal transitions and also kind of relegating one of the more advanced, if you will, transitions as well. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tuckvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.